All right, chat's time. It's mid-season. Mid-season was like, what, over a week ago, actually, I think. And I haven't been hardcore grinding as much. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, when the MAGA became meta for a week, Actually, wait, no, it's two weeks since mid-season, right? His subs and uh, so actually, no, it has been two weeks. I lied. It has play. been two weeks. It has been two weeks. They just reverted the stuff after a week. I haven't been grinding a ton, mostly because that one week of Malga literally killed any motivation to play this game. Uh, that being said, I also had been playing a ton before that, so a little bit of burnout. But that being said, also, I've also been keeping up with the game. I've played some ranks since then. I've been watching OWCS. I have a pretty good idea on where characters are laying at the moment. First up, uh, the Demon and Destroyer of Worlds, the worst thing probably to happen to Overwatch since Brig. Uh, whenever his meta just trashes the entire game and is low-key actually probably still slept on toward this day is Malga. We start him off strong, we throw him in the A tier. You remember one of my previous tier lists, Malga was still like B or C tier. Uh, and if you remember, Malga got really buffed right here. Giga buffed almost. And it was hard to tell when I looked at it originally because I was like, hmm, I don't know. Like they changed the way like his E worked a bit, but the overhealth was big. I was like, wow, the overhealth is probably going to be strong, but I'm not sure about the smaller cooldown, shorter duration. It might be good, might be bad. I was wrong and I'm like, oh, it might not be that bad. It was bad. So then they reverted it up here. But here's the thing, though, when they reverted it, they did not revert again the Can you stop stomp. Over? Basically, his... Overrun, he's like, oh, that still is buffed. And so it, the damage on it went, I think, from when, like what? Like, it's like 60 to 120 if you like land on somebody or something like that. Um, so it's pretty big burst damage. And then his E got reverted to the way it was. It was 45 to 60. But even is it if you land on somebody dead on, like a headshot, isn't it like, is it 80? Or is it 120 for the headshot? Karki told me that if you land on someone dead on, it's like the headshot, it's like 120, I think. Okay, so that's what it is. So the base is 60, but if you headshot someone landing on them, it's 120? I don't know. Anyways, point is, Malga is still better now than where he was before the, the Season 9 mid-season patch. And he's actually still getting play in OWCS, just not as much. The OWCS roster is pretty much four heroes plus a tank. And now you might say, oh, well, no shit floods. I meant like four, the same four heroes pretty much are played. And then the tank is the one that's kind of being rotated out, which is both good and bad uh, in a lot of ways. But yeah, Malga low-key really still slept on. Um, I think he's almost like a Rissa, where people don't want to play him uh, because he's sucks to play. But if he's strong, then people will play him just like a Rissa. Next up, Doomfist. Uh, Doomfist actually is still really good, uh, but you have to be good at Doom. That's the problem. And so people always sit there and go, well, Floods, if not everyone can play Doom, then maybe the hero's not good. No, shut up. I'm sorry. Like, I agree with you at the same time. Eight here, we got it. Speed it up. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm muting you guys. I'm sorry. You guys, you guys are getting put in jail for the rest of the tier list. Uh, you guys cannot control your TTSs. Yeah, basically, Doom is still really good. If you're good at Doom, and a lot of teams still play Doom, depending on what maps and what comps and whatnot they're running. Uh, and I would still say he's probably the same thing in about an A tier. Really, really good. But he's also significantly more difficult to play. So because he's more difficult to play uh, than other tanks, most people won't play him. That doesn't mean Doom is bad. That just means you're not good at Doom. Which is fine. Nothing's wrong with that. Because I'm in the same boat as you. But Doom is still good. Junker Queen. Junker Queen's weird, because I think Junker Queen is a lot worse now because people have figured out how to play against her. So I'm going to give her a B. And what I say by people have figured out how to play against her is there's one character right now, especially in the ladder, where you just pick and then Junker Queen is basically useless. It's Cass. Cass f shits on Queen, because Queen has to play in the range where Cass is good. The hinder actually is one of the only things that like is still useful is versus queen like hinder versus like tracer and shit is useless you're never hit you're never hindering a tracer right like you're never hindering a genji you're never hindering any of these flankers it doesn't happen where does the hinder go 90 percent of the time on the tank but what can you do with the cast versus the 
the queen. If you know she's going to go for queen alt in the second, pre-hinder, you might get lucky and then she goes for her alt and gets hindered. Or the big one is you hinder her shout. And so she goes for the, the, the aggressive shout play. You throw the hinder back away. Even if she knifes you, you still roll and you just keep headshotting her on cooldown. She dies. Um, in organized or coordinated play, it might be a little bit better. Or there's just better picks than queen. Uh, and we'll get to those in a minute. But queen, I think, comes down a tier to B. Winton. This is a hard one. Because there's two answers. The answer is if you're exceptionally good at the game, like top tier, you're playing in like the best ranks, like you're playing top 10 level, uh, you're you're playing on like pro teams, you're scrimming, then he's probably into the A or S. But for ranked, I don't think that's true. I think for ranked, he's just not as good. Uh, and the reason why I don't think he's good and ranked is because basically part of what, what Winston does at this point is just make space for your two DPS especially your tracer and your tracer bubble dances with your winston right so like you know like that's a big thing when you play tracer or sorry when you play winston you drop your bubble and then like dance between the bubble you're basically engaging to drop a bubble for your tracer so they can kill shit does that coordination happen in ranked a lot of times no do you also have the amount of healing and support that you would have in ranked versus the team play no like it's just it's too hard like it genuinely is too hard and i think you're going to notice something with this tier list where characters that are just genuinely too hard to play probably aren't going to be ranked very high while the characters that are easier to play are probably not going to be ranked or probably going to be ranked higher with one exception being Doomfist. that being said let's go to the best tank in my opinion currently is orissa i'm kind of half tempted to throw her an s tier actually like I don't know if I totally think she's S tier, but like in ranked, I think she could be. I'm I'm still torn, but Orisa's really good. Um, you turn your brain off, you f stand there and don't die. You shoot their tank slash their Orisa. If they're playing tank, you shoot their tank if they're playing one of these tanks. Shoot the tank. Shoot the tank. Don't shoot the tank. Depends, but probably not shoot the tank. Unless you spear him. Shoot the tank. Shoot the tank. Shoot the tank. Don't shoot the tank. Shoot the shield a little bit, then shoot others. Shoot the DM. Shoot the tank. Shoot the tank. You just basically stand there and don't die. And that's your whole job. And it's really annoying. And it's really boring. And Orisa is one of those characters that's just a stat pattern character. Where, where she just as good because she can exist really really hard and that's it that's personally why i haven't played a whole lot of ranked in the last week because like even though mauga is not hard meta mauga is still really good but aris is really good and there's a couple other potentials we're going to get to in a minute that i think are also pretty good but i think aris is the easiest turn your brain off get good, good amount of value he's still played a lot actually a top level play they play her a lot in owcs uh, I wouldn't say she's dominating OWCS. You still see Malga. You still see Winston. You still see Doomfist. You see a lot of Ram, actually. You see a lot of Sigma, actually. And even... I don't know if I'd say a ton of Diva and Zarya, but, like, you can see some of that stuff, right? But is getting enough play in both pro play and ladder play that I think I have to give her the S tier as the best tank. Ryan! <sighs> There's just no point. There's just no point. Just don't do it. Don't do it, dude. It's such a bait. Because if you play in the metal ranks, you're bronze to like gold or plat. You might think Ryan's actually really good. And you wouldn't be wrong. You wouldn't be wrong. But once you cross the threshold of like Diamond Masters, Ryan becomes so ex exponentially harder to play that it's just more advantageous for you to learn another tank. It's bad. There's no point. His niche is dominated by other tanks at this point. You're just an outdated hero. I'm sorry. And don't get me wrong, there's people out there who can still play Ryan and win games. But man, do they literally want to chew on some glass. They hate their experience. It's so terrible. Like, like genuinely, 
on some basic level somewhere. You play video games for fun, right? Like you play video games for fun, whether that fun comes from winning, whether that fun comes from improvement, whether that fun comes from friends, whether it comes from something. I cannot conceive a single place where Ryan is fun. There just isn't. There just isn't. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. You just get CC'd into oblivion. Stunned, you can't reach anybody. Your fire strike got buff, which is nice and feels better, but just play Zarya and stand a little bit further away and do way more damage. Or play Ramatra and just punch him to death. And anytime you get in trouble, you go, oh. And really, if you want to be a dick, just play a fing Arissa and stand there and shoot at him. And then now, now what? Now you can't get to play the game. And you're trying to pin? Spear. You're trying to walk at you? Spinny spear. You're trying to swing on him? Fortify. The entire time, never stop shooting. Like, oh man, it's painful. Next up, another A tier tank is Ramatra. Ramatra is A tier, and it's not for why you probably think. Um, yeah, I don't even know if Ryan getting a sniper rifle would really help at this point, but Ramatra meta, at least in high level play, has become block simulator. Do you notice something in common with these two tanks of Ryan and Rama I mean Ramatra and Orissa is they just have extremely good damage mitigation, and for Ramatra, it's just walking up and going. And you just kind of wait till everyone leaves you alone. And if you've watched any like OWCS, it's very funny because in the team fight, you'll see everyone go to all in the tank. He goes to block. They shoot him for like three or four seconds, realize they can't kill him because of the block and the heals. And they go, oh, okay. And then they look at other stuff and start like going elsewhere. And that's when then they like, they throw like one punch and then they turn back around. And they go, whoop, wasn't me. Like, <laughs> it's so sad. It's actually so sad. Um, and it just feels terrible, you know? Like, whether you think tank is balanced or not, it just feels terrible. And I I think that's what a lot of people are misunderstanding when tanks are complaining about the game at this point. It's like, it doesn't matter if you think it's balanced. It doesn't matter how you think the game looks from your POV. If you've played the tank POV, POV a lot in this past few seasons, in this season especially, I think you start to understand that like, it's just genuinely not as enjoyable. And it's weird, because you both have the most pressure on you to perform, but like, it's also the most expected, right? Like if you don't play perfectly, your team hates you and like, wants you to fall off the map IRL. Uh, but even if you do play perfectly, like it's like, well, you should, you were supposed to do that. But if a Widow hits four shots in a row and kills four people, everyone's like, oh my God, you're insane, you're nuts. Or if a support like survives, gets a good ult off, sleeps, sleeps somebody, right? Or uh, it gets a big cleanse or whatever it is. Like, oh my God, you popped off. Like that was huge. Nope, doesn't happen on tank roll. Tank roll is just like, just stand there. So anyways, that's for Macho. Uh, this might be controversial. I think this is probably gonna be extremely controversial. Uh, but low key, I think Hogs like an A tier. I think Hogs actually f insane and ranked. I don't know why they buffed his heal and then didn't revert it when they changed the DPS passive because the DPS passive was what works was keeping Hog from being really really good I think, and then they buffed his heal resistance, so he takes less damage and heals better, and then they also nerfed the DPS passive and just made him better. At least in ranked, it just feels like Hog just like, oh man, just feel like you bump into a wall. But then it's the same shit. If like you have Arissa and a Hog on the other team, you just stand there and look at each other, you know? And every time the Hog looks for a hook, you spear him out of it or try to like take it with your Fortify or Spinning Spear or whatever. And then plus they also buffed the Hog hook, right? Or it brings them in closer. So like the Hog one shot's kind of back, right? Where you have the trap plus the, the hook, it doesn't boot them up as high. So you do more damage, you have the one shot kind of back, and you survive better, you know? Hog low key, I think is extremely good, at least in ladder. And I guess like some teams have tried to play a little bit in OWCS and like other regions, uh, but I don't think really NA is. I think it was like one NA game or NA EMCA. I think, what was it? Like Timeless or something played it the other day? But I think they were kind of trolling. I think they were low key trolling. So, anyways, though, Hog actually pretty good. Uh, to round up that tier up top, I would actually say Sigma's really good too. Uh, Sigma's always going to be one of those tanks that's just consistently pretty good. 
maybe not like meta defining, but there's always at least a few maps where you always will pick Sigma. Your Circuit Royales, kind of your Junker Town, not as much as Junker Town anymore, but definitely your Circuit Royale. He just can kind of do everything. Um, and I would I would argue that if you ever in a situation in the game where you say to yourself, holy f I don't know what to play here, just pick Sigma, genuinely. Like if you if you are at a loss and you don't know what to do, like your team's discombobulated, you're not playing the best, they just have the goat on some role on their team, just play Sigma. Just play Sigma. You'll probably figure it out. Um What's next? Diva. I think Diva's really good too. Uh, but I wouldn't put her on the same level as these guys. I think you still play him on like, you know, your Gibraltar, your Dorado seconds, your Numbani first, you know? Uh but I feel like these guys are just a different level, you know? They're just a different level at this point about surviving. Um, at least in ladder, right? It's different with, like, team play, and it's different with, like, you know, organized scrim play or top 10 lobbies. But Diva's still really good. Just, like, you know, if it's not really a dive map, are you really gonna... Do you really want to pick Diva? Probably not. Probably not, you know? But she's still really good. Exceptionally good. So, solid B. Uh, this is a tough one, actually. I kind of want to throw Zarya in the A, because i actually seen some people shredding on Zarya. But I also don't think she's as good as, say, like, Ramatra. But at the same time, though, in ladder, I'm not sure. It'd be probably bottom of A, top of B at the worst. I, yeah, I'd say she's a ranked demon. Probably. Rank Demon. I don't know how I feel about this one. This is a tough one. Because if, like, you're a really good Zarya, you farm. Like, you farm. But it's not as much of turn your brain off, just pick this character and stand in the corner and say it's, like, Orisa. Or, or Matra, right? So I don't know if I want to put her in the same tier. Nah, I'm not going to overthink it. That's fine. A is fine. Uh, For Ball, I'd probably say C. At best. Um, you see good balls every once in a while, uh, but I honestly, he's a lot like Ryan in a lot of ways where it, like it's map dependent and a lot of other stuff. Uh, but I'd argue a good ball is probably better than a good Ryan at this point. But yeah, it's like, it's not great. Like it's not like we, these two, these two should be in a new category called do not pick these, right? Uh, but at least ball, you can get good value on certain points on certain maps. The reason why Ball isn't that good is one, because Sombra's a lot better. Sombra's a lot better. Two, half the time with the way the game is developed at the moment, the reason why you don't pick Ball is you don't have a front line. I love how I looked over and somebody said, I disagree, Cloudy put Ryan at S. You ever looked at a Cloudy tier list before? You understand he puts S, Ryan, every single tier list, right? That's like his meme. Like, are you guys dense you got hit in the head with some coconuts that's literally his meme every time the guy makes a tier list he puts ryan and s why do you think that is anyways next soldier uh soldier low key okay uh i wouldn't say he's like op or anything solid b uh not a whole lot to say here good against like queen uh good against like annoying like a risk if you have a zen good against annoying like zarya good against po poking out like a rhyme even um but you know where soldier gets shit on tracer ball dive if they go ball tracer dive you know who instantly dies soldier instantly instantly ball tracer roll soldier uh ash i'd say is pretty good uh i don't know if i want to put a back in ash or a ash back in a again i do think she is really really good though i'm gonna stick to my guns i'm gonna go b plus a minus on ash bob is insane correct um but look what's meta right now. Hard wall. Annoying wall. DPS-y fast-paced dive. Wall. Wall. Poke wall. Really aggressive, pub stomping brawl. Where is she really good here? I would argue not that great versus Arissa. I would argue pretty good against Mauga. I'd say it's okay with Doom. I'd say it's okay with Ramatra. Really good against Hog. Not great versus Sigma, but doable. Really good versus Zarya. Ah, 
this is semantics. This, this is really a lot not to argue about B or A. I don't think it really matters too, too much. Well, let's move on. Bastion. Uh, Bastion low key is not that good. He's just annoying. He's just a tank destroyer. That's it. His whole niche at this point is destroying tanks. Like if they have a really, 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 really good tank, but the rest of their team is terrible, and they're playing like Ryan, uh, Queen, not Malga, Ram, Hog, hell, even Zarya, just May Bastion, isolate him for a second, you'll just explode him, you know? You know what I'm saying? But overall, Bastion's really not that good. Cass. You know, I might be crazy for this one. I genuinely might be crazy for this one, but I don't care. I'm throwing Cass in the A tier. I think Cass is a ranked demon. I think he's a ranked demon. I think that you don't play him in pro play. You're not going to see him in OWCS very much because he's super easy to stop. But in ranked, like in your 99% of ranked games, destroys. Does tons. Can roll. Very annoying against. Can roll. Can roll slash very annoying against. Farms, but also like there's a trade off, but it can farm. Uh, not the best pick versus. Definitely annoying to play against. Farms, farms, not the best pick against. Farms, farms. Yeah. And in and, and organized play, you know, just all in him, right? And you can't do anything about it. Give him no space, but in rank, that doesn't happen very often. So let's give him a solid A. He actually does get played in OWCS quite a bit, especially in Korea. Really? I haven't watched OWCS Korea. I've been watched. I have only watched really NA. Um, so that's interesting to hear. Echo. Um, I think Echo's low key pretty good. I think Echo's low key pretty good. Probably the best of the flex DPS or close to it. There's one other that I might throw in there. The reason where Echo's so good is because look at the tanks that are meta. Orisa, Malga, Doom, Ramatra. Hog even, Sigma even, Zarya even. All of these tanks have multiple bailout abilities where her health for the first few seconds doesn't matter, right? The only one I would argue is maybe Hog where it's not great. Ramacha, you can immediately just put your shield down and then pop your shift so you go from 300 health to like 450, right? Doomfist, you immediately just start looking for your combos. Immediately, right? Mauga, same thing, you just immediately pop your E and start shooting their tank. Arisa, you immediately pop your Fortify, and there's no way you're instantly dying, right? Because a lot of the other tanks, if you copy Ryan, if you copy Ball, if you copy Queen... Actually, Queen's a little bit different because you have Shout. If you copy Winston, if you copy D.Va, um, you can get blown up really, really quickly because she doesn't have much health in copy form. Um, but with, like, the current tanks that are strong and the way that they're strong... Low-key. Low-key, she's pretty good. Uh, Genji. I think Genji's very middle of the pack. I don't think he's... Good, I don't think he's bad. I think he's okay. You know? He's aight. He's okay. There's just not really reason to play Genji. Even in Dive. Just play Tracer Sombra or Tracer Sojourn. You know? C-ish? Nah. C, C is like below average in this. Look, look at what we have here. There's six categories. Right? Like you're, When you say C, you're grading on a, an Americanized A to F format. We have S tier too. So C is slightly below average. You gotta look in these tier lists. Best, really good, good. Below average, really below average, fucking unplayable. F is supposed to be unplayable. Like legitimately don't pick the character. Hence Ryan like a season before any of the buffs was F tier. I think, I think way too many of you guys get way too locked in over here instead of looking at like the overall sentiment of what's going on, you know? Hanzo. Um, I think Hanzo's not great, but not terrible. At least in a ranked format. I think he's okay. I don't think he's, like, good. I don't think he's bad. Uh, I could easily see him actually maybe even dropping a little bit. But I think that with, like, the way that the meta's shaken up, with, like, the way you play, like, the slower stand there tanks, he can kind of get a little bit more done. When Dive was really meta at the beginning of the season, mm -mm. no, he was, he was not, not playable. But yeah, Storm Arrow pumping into like this more sedentary, sen hello, sedentary tanks, like the tanks that don't move, uh, can be pretty strong. So, 
Uh, Junkrat. I'd say Junkrat's probably a little bit below average. Although in ranked, he's pro he's actually made a little bit of a comeback. Uh, definitely not the best pick, though. Definitely not the best pick. Uh, by any means necessary. So, you know, take that as you will. Not going to talk about Junkrat too much. Just probably don't, probably don't play Junkrat. But, like, if you play Junkrat, like, if you're really good at Junkrat, it's all right. You'll be fine. This might be a little controversial. I don't think May's that good. I think a May is just frustrating to deal with. May suffers this season a lot. Right? You know what May's good at? Walling. That's it. Once her wall's up, she's not useful. Her icicles aren't as impactful anymore. Hell, even her freeze isn't as scary anymore because it doesn't do as much damage relative to your health pool, right? It's just f annoying. May is just f annoying, you know? And her ult is just f annoying. Like, that is the best way of describing it. When you play against your May, your May you're like, you, I hate you. You smell. I hope you step on a Lego. It doesn't mean she's good, though. Right? That's just, that's just the way it is. Uh, next up. I'm actually going to knock Farah down a tier. To C tier. Even though I think she's still pretty good. Um, I think just Hitscan have become so dominant with the new format. That there's not really a reason to play Farah. You know? Even though I've seen some really good Farahs, they're so rare. And I feel like you just get you just get shit on. You know? You need to hit like your first two rockets back to back. So I wouldn't advise playing her. But she's not the worst either. Which might be okay. So uh Reaper. I'm gonna keep Reaper in about that B tier. I think Reaper has a place. Um in certain Games playing in certain heroes, hey, say your 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 Ramatras, your Maugas, your really aggressive brawl Zarya, like running out of Zarya, right? Like, like let's say you're playing versus Zarya comp and you play like Queen, and like you're running at them, you shout for your Reaper and you run at their Zarya. Yeah, it can be pretty good. It can be pretty good. Um, but at the same time, the Reaper is very two dimensional. You know, as the tank, you can explode really, really quick versus Reaper, but also there's times where Reaper's useless. So, a little bit of give and take. All right, next up, big one. Easy S tier, Sojourn. Arguably the best DPS in the game. That's not named Tracer. What else is there to say, man? She's got it all. She's got crazy, crazy mobility on a short cooldown. Really good damage. Borderline deletion one-shot potential like yeah obviously with like you know the health pool changes and whatnot um it's not as bad anymore which is great uh but man when that overclock goes off dude it's just like this ends now it's just like me looking at my watch and going <sighs> well hopefully she won't get another one of those before the end of the game so we're all dead here but maybe you know maybe she won't get it one more time you know uh, we're all dead. Uh, it just, it ends now, and everybody dies, and it's sad, and that's just the way it is, but that's a high rank problem, because in the lower ranks, apparently, Sojourn's really, really bad. Really, really bad. And that's the whole reason why they buffed her originally, to make it so that she keeps 25% of her charge. It doesn't go all the way to zero, it stops at 25, because lower ranks are terrible. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know if that's ever going to get fixed. You know, I don't know if that's ever going to get fixed. That's just one of those skill differences between like high level play and low level play. Um, so maybe in your rank games, if you're like in your bronze to like plat area, maybe don't play Sojourn because she's really hard to play, apparently. Uh, but at least overall in the game, she's really, really good. So uh, next up, Sombra. Uh, I'd say Sombra's a solid A tier. Uh, she would have been an S tier pick before they reverted her ultimate charge time. Um, basically, Sombra was just running the lobbies during that Malga week. It was just Malga v Malga. And then depending on who you were playing against, they had like Sim Sombra. Or it was like uh, Sombra Sojourn or Sombra Tracer. It was just like, dude, it was just Dude, it was awful. It was so bad. Luckily, since then, Sombra's not playing as much. She's still really good, though. So, Sombra's still exceptional. Symmetra. 
I'm going to give Symmetra at least a solid B. A solid B. This might have changed in the last week or so. Um, you know, as people started playing new stuff and there was a new patch and whatnot. Uh, but man, the psychological damage that Symmetra did to me in the one week where she got really buffed uh, two weeks ago was incredible. I've never felt more powerless in my whole life. Uh, <laughs> that being said, they did scale back some of the buffs she got. Um, but her turrets still do a lot of damage. And I think we actually watched an OWCS game the other day where a sim single-handedly won them a point because the sim turret on the ground killed three people. Didn't we watch that together? Like, I feel like we, they were TPing back and forth and there was just a sim turret on the ground and it killed three different people. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a little, it was a little insane, um, to say the least. So, I, I give a little bit more respect to Symmetra than probably others do. So, anyways, next up, Torb. Uh, Torb is going to get a solid B. Solid, solid, solid B. Maybe even... Honestly, I'm thinking about maybe giving Torb the A. Torb actually might deserve the A. I'm gonna give him the A. Think about what's meta right now, chat. Look, look, look what's meta. Tracer, okay, let's let's just get ahead of the game. Tracer's meta, Tracer's at S tier, easily. Sojourn's not as great against, but Sombra's still really good, right? Cass is really good, at least in ranked, right? Torb is still good against all of these guys. Good again, Cass is an easy hitbox to hit, so a lot of times don't really have to struggle. Echo would be the outlier um, to deal with. But yeah, like if if they're playing like Doom, Tracer, Sombra, or anything like that, like Torb is really good. And he, it's not like he does bad versus like Malga, right? Like think about it, when Malga pops ult on his cage, if you have Torbal, you just walk in there and spray the whole ground. What's that Malga gonna do? He has to cancel his cage or he's dead. You know, so like in some ways, Torb's actually a pretty decent counter to Malga. Uh, and you stop his big button, aka his cage. Same with May? No, no. I mean, well, the thing is with May is like you cancel his cage and you just overrun out of it. Torbolt, you still own the space, right? And it's like May's also not as threatening. Like the icicles aren't as threatening as Torb just popping his E and going Cheeto, 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 Cheeto headshot on you. You know what I mean? Um, so I wouldn't say May is the same caliber. I really wouldn't. Uh, but May is also really not that good versus dive. And Torb is a lot better versus dive. And the Torb turret obviously also provides the DPS debuff. So I think he's low key really good. That's that's my thing. Anyways. Uh, Widowmaker, uh, I'm going to give Widowmaker the solid B. Solid B tier. Um, can be really good on some maps. Can take over a whole lobby. On others, she doesn't do shit. So, Widow's very hit or miss. I'm going to give her a solid B. Middle of the road. Playable. Can be good. Just got to hit your shots. You know? Last but not least. Support. Zen... I still hate playing against Zen. And it feels even worse with the DPS passive and Discord Orm. But I don't think he's that crazy. But he's still very strong. Especially against current meta. Good versus Arissa. Can be good versus Malga. Not really. You don't want to really play versus Doom. Can be good versus Ramatra. Can be very good versus Hog. Probably don't want to play it versus Sigma. Probably don't want to play it versus Zarya, but can. I'm leaning between B and A. Looking at the rest of this roster, I think I have to go A. Let's put him back a little bit. Let's put him back a little bit. Let's do the easy ones first, shall we? Let's do the easy ones first. Let's set the let's set this let's set the tempo. Kiri is an easy S tier. If you notice from OWCS this weekend, every single f***ing team played either Kiri or Moira. The other character they played with was Lucio. Every f team played Lucio. Every single f***ing team. I'm also throwing Moira in the S tier. Even though, realistically, Kiri and Lucio should be on an S plus tier, almost. I'm not gonna make that this time. 
The reason why I'm keeping Moira in the S tier with them is because Moira is still really, 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 really good. And it's just a playstyle difference, right? And especially in ranked is kind of a ranked demon, right? Gotta give it her, give it her credit. Uh, but these three have been dominating the game. Dominating at the highest level. To the point where you don't even see anything else, really. Um, we saw, like, I guess I've seen, like, a little Brig and a little Bat, but not really. Not really. So, let's go next to Bat. Well, streamer, if you've only seen these three supports, the other ones must suck, right? No. It's actually not what it is at all. It's actually not what it is at all. They're still really good. I think BAP is actually really good. But just not as good as the top three. There's no point, right? Like, BAP just doesn't do enough healing compared to Moira. It doesn't do enough damage compared to Moira. And then doesn't have the utility of Kiri, right? Like, Lamp is good, but they also nerfed Lamp recently. Um... While Kiri has the best ability in the game, Suzu, and arguably one of the best ultimates in the game, Itsune Rush, and the ability to dual flankers, and the ability to not get dived, and the ability to fight back. So, you know, bro, what are you talking about? It's Moira slash Kiri. When I said they're all playing Moira and Kiri, that means they picked one of the two. The other one was this one. You don't play the... Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I'm now remembering why I make multiple tiers within the tier, same tier list. I don't need to. Because, like, guys, I swear, like, you don't listen. Like, you just don't, you don't f listen. <laughs> oh my goodness. You don't play more. You're not gonna play more Akiri together. You want the speed. You want utility. So Lucio's almost the always must pick. So you put Lucio over here, okay? Lucio's off to the side, and then you pick one of these two. A lot. Of, most teams pick this one, but some teams pick this one, and because it was based off of preference and based off of map and based off of comp. But everybody picked this one. Listen. Lock in. Fuck. Anyways. Um. So yeah. Basically, these are the top ones. Bap is still really good, but just you just can't compete. Can't compete. Anna is a tough one because I think Anna low key is still pretty decent, but she suffers from the same problem Bap does, where she just doesn't do enough healing to compete with Moira, doesn't have the same utility as say Anna or as, as Kiri, doesn't have the survivability of either of them, and that's the big one. Any of you who say C are absolutely insane. She's not C. Jesus Christ. Anna is not good as these guys because they're in their own f league. They're in their own league. You know what? F it, dude. Okay. There you go. Brig uh, would be another one of those ones where I think is actually low key still really good. Still low-key really good. Uh, but again, there's just not a really reason to play her a lot of times because one, you don't play Brig with Brawl. Uh, there's not really a point to playing Brig with Brawl. Uh, and two, Dive's not really meta. So Di Brig's really good versus Dive. Dive's not meta. It's more like these stand there brick wall tanks. And also she did get that repair pack buff, you're correct. Uh, so she's good, especially in ladder but not like to the same level as these guys, right? They're not on the same level. Now let's come back around to Zen. Zen gets an easy A. I, looking at all the other ones and where we've talked about them, easy A. Zen's definitely better than Nana. For sure. For sure better than Nana. Still gets a lot of value on a lot of maps. The only problem with Zen is if you bump into a really good f***ing Tracer, you're probably gonna have to swap. There happens to be lots of good Tracers, but that doesn't mean Zen's bad. That just means Tracer is literally designed to eat you up. What about sleep? You're gonna, you, you're basically putting an entire character's ability to get value on hitting one singular 15 second cooldown. Overwatch is about consistency. 
You got one shot to hit a good sleep. One shot. The chances of you hitting that one shot every single time are not that high. One. And two, what happens if there's two people and they won't hit one of them? Now what? You're dead. Next up, Ilari. Uh, Lari low-key not bad. Ilari is actually low-key not bad. Uh, the buffs they gave her did really, really good for her. Uh, but again, there's just not a really reason to play her. Uh, because there's just other supports that are way better. But that doesn't mean she's bad. Right? It's the same reason why earlier was like, some f***ing idiot was like, Oh, look at all the tanks in A tier. Oh, tank is terrible. Yeah, well, it's, well what about all the what about the couple supports that are in B tier? They're not bad. It's just you probably wouldn't pick them over some of the other ones because the other ones are better. Because that's how tier lists work. But yeah, Alari's Alari's pretty decent. Alari's pretty good. Uh, I think that she could shine with a few adjustments to the game. But not every character needs to be meta at the exact same time. That's just how the game goes, you know? That's just the way the game goes. Uh, Life Weaver. Solid C. Play. I've seen people play him, just not really that good. Not real reason. Not really a reason to play Life Weaver at all. But at the same time, you can't buff him. I feel like you can't buff Weaver anymore. Like, if you buff Weaver anymore, it's just like... Like, Weaver is an example of the support version of a lot of the tanks nowadays, right? Where he's just a numbers character. He's just a numbers character. His whole shtick is just providing really, really high amounts of healing. And with a yoink. And the platform to just stand on for a little bit, right? The Rhine of supports? No, I would argue he's more like Arissa, but useless, right? Like, basically Arissa's whole shtick is to stand there and try not to die, right? But Weaver's is like you stand in the back and just pump out endless amounts of healing. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I guess I'm just not a huge fan of how Weaver's designed. Last but not least, probably the hottest topic in the history of Overwatch is Mercy. And I gotta give her the D tier. I think she's really not good. Uh, the only reason you'd ever play Mercy is if you're playing ranked and you have an incredible Sojourn player on your team and you're like, that guy's insane. Let me just pocket him for the entire game. And that's it. That's it. Her heals are terrible. Her movement, which I've predicted very early on before the season nine even launched, was I think that her movement isn't going to be as good because people are going to learn how to play with the new changes to the game like projectile changes and in the first like week or two it didn't appear to be like that like she ended up being like slightly okay at the beginning um and then very quickly people realized how bad she is and she even went lower and lower and lower and lower uh so yeah uh mercy unfortunately is kind of terrible uh and there's almost never a reason to even pick her and so for that i gotta give her the d tier alongside ryan cool all right there's your Season 9 mid-season tier list official. No one else's opinion matters. This is the definite one, of course, uh, like always. Yeah, that's that's just that's the law of the land, apparently. Um, clearly not satire in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but yeah, there you go.